Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today, maybe one of the most important theorems in the last, well, I don't know, 60 years or so in geometric topology. Well, whatever that means, obviously. Um, the so-called h cobordism theorem. So I will tell you what the H is. I will tell you what a cobordism is. But essentially, these are nice manifolds between manifolds. And this is what this is all about. And in the next video, I'm going to explain how this proves the Poincaré conjecture, or let's say the Poincaré conjecture in high enough dimension, the low dimensions are still very tricky, even after you have this theorem, which is a really ridiculous one. Um, in particular, if you think of dimension two, um, then this is kind of really, really strange. Anyway, so a cobordism is a really fantastic, is a really fantastic idea. I don't know where this goes, where, where this originates. Well, obviously it doesn't originate in topology, but um, who invented it or whatever, but it comes kind of around from the mid of the 50s of the last century for sure, and probably was older as well. It's this idea to have a map between manifolds which is itself a manifold. So my map will be denoted W and it is a map from let's say N to M, N, M to N. I should have used different letters. I always hate M and N. They always sound the same for me. I should just call them A and B. I'm sorry, now we have to go for it. So it's a map from M to N. And the, the point is, so this is an uh, N plus one dimensional manifold. This is an M dimensional manifold. F, uh, God, there you go. An N dimensional manifold. M and N, M and N. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Anyway, <laughs> this is also an N dimensional manifold. And there's an M plus one dimensional manifold in between. And such that the boundary, let's say the start boundary is M and the uh, target boundary is N. And you need some decorations to talk about start and bound, uh, target, but let's not worry about it. Essentially, it's a nice map between two manifolds. So you can have, for example, here's another example. You can have a circle here and you want to go to a circle here and what you can pull in in between. Um, so circle is a one dimensional manifold, one dimensional, and I can put something two dimensional in between, for example, uh, something like this. Now that's a, a map from a one-dimensional object to a one-dimensional object and it's two-dimensional. That is always one bigger. And this is this idea of a cobordism. And maps are, obviously we all know that maps are very important. So cobordism should be very important in topology. And yes, they are really, really, really important in topology. And if you don't care whether they're important, it's also a really beautiful idea to have a map. So some, for some reasons, because, well, it's pretty easy to explain. I stole the picture. So this map is reading in this direction. This map is reading in this direction. So uh, whoever created this picture, uh, attributes, uh, contributions are in the uh, description. So all the links to the pictures um, for Wikipedia here. Um, yeah, well, likes to read from left to right, while I apparently like to read from bottom to top. So there are the four options. Let me just waffle about that, how to read. Uh, diagrammatics and I always like this one here but I'm, it's just it's just a choice my brain at one point uh, made and obviously you can do the other ones as well um, yeah whatever that was off topic <laughs> cobordism is a map between manifolds and there's this notion of homotopy equivalence which is kind of the wrong notion for um, uh, geometric topology where we are interested in homeomorphisms at homeomorphism, we classified surfaces up to homeomorphism and all that fun stuff. Um, but as a weaker notion, it's called homotopy equivalence, and it's what algebraic topology is about, if you want. And homotopy equivalence, for example, can collapse uh, dimensions while, while a homeomorphism can't do that. So let me just think in this video about homotopy equivalence to we could can continuously squeeze things until they are just smaller so you can for example continuously squeeze the whole space onto a point by just contracting every point into one point so um the whole space is called homotopy equivalence the whole space so here in this case, in my little example here would be R2, but it holds for all N, so Rn, is always homotopy equivalent to a point. It's not homeomorphic to a point. The point has dimension zero, the R2 has dimension two. But this weaker notion um, and actually does the job. So the point is kind of most invariance of algebraic topology 
can only detect homotopy equivalence. They can't really detect homeomorphism. But you always have this direction. So if you're homeomorphic, then you're homotopy equivalent. But the converse is just not true. And here is this example. So we, kind of the point is here um, that this notion of homotopy equivalent has, has a really strong, well, series of, well, a really strong theory associated to it, namely algebraic topology, but it's not quite what we want. So you always need to work a little bit harder um, to go from, or actually it's usually a lot of work to go from homotopy equivalence to homeomorphism. And the H is already homotopy equivalent. So an H cobordism is a cobordism here, like here, or like here. So this is just a cylinder now reading in this direction. It's hollow. So I could put my finger through. So it goes from one dimensional object to circle here, that's actually M, to a one dimensional object that's N, another circle, and the cylinder itself is W. And an H, this is an example of an H cobordism. An H cobordism is something where the inclusion maps of M and N are homotopy equivalences. And that's the case here. So this is an H cobordism. This is an H. This is not the case here. This is not an H cobordism. So not every cobordism is an H cobordism. So what you need is that the uh, inclusions of the boundary into the whole beast, into W, are homotopy equivalences. And that's what's called an H cobordism. Here on the right hand side, the cylinder. And you don't have much more. Um, H, well, H cobordism homotopy equivalences in dimension two, but it turns out, so H cobordisms are pretty rare, um, but it turns out that there are uh, quite a few, well, in general, and turns out that this is a really brilliant idea due to Smail in the 60s. So that's 60 years ago, say, uh, whatever, 62. And here comes a theorem. It's really fantastic. It's really, really non-trivial to prove. So let's say you have two manifolds, um, let's say dimension is big enough here. This restriction here is exactly what we have, what I tried to explain in the last video. Some of the low dimensions are very tricky. And assume that they are H cobordant via a simply connected uh, cobordism, then, then they are actually homeomorphic, right? So the point here, and this is really where the magic comes from and why this is so complicated, is a step from homot homotopy equivalence to homeomorphism. So homeomorphism is what we want. We want homeomorphic, but we usually only get um, homotopy equivalence, but you can kind of beef that up. So you only need this H cobordism uh, uh, between two manifolds, and then you know that they are homeomorphic. And this is such an important result in, or was, and still is, in uh, topology that Smale actually got the Fields Medal uh, for this discovery. So Fields Medal, the Nobel Prize of Mathematics, which apparently is a game for the young because you can only, like, like this funny, uh, whatever, <laughs> because you can only um, get it if you're below 40. So for some funny reasons. Um, whether that makes sense or not, who cares? But Smale was uh, younger than 40, 60 years ago, and got the Fields Medal was this really, really fabulous and fantastic th theorem that connects homotopy equivalence and homeomorphism. And I will show you in the next video how that can be used to prove the Poincaré conjecture. Remember, it was this conjecture that every kind of simply connected thing in a certain sense, uh, so where I could shrink um, the circles, is this weird. And we'll use that conjecture. We will use that conjecture to prove the conjecture. That's not a good idea. We will use the H cobordism theorem to prove the conjecture. And you have already seen the restriction here, right? So this will be the same restriction. And the only remaining dimensions are three and four, which turn out to be uh, the really, really, really tricky ones. Anyway, so H cobordism, this beautiful idea that kind of connects algebraic topology and geometric topology, if you want. So it is this major step from a homotopy equivalence to homeomorphism. And remember, this is really huge. For example, uh, the space itself, our space, the space around you is a homo homotopy equivalent to a point, which is not really good if that would be an homeomorphism. It's not homeomorphic to a point. We can still live in three space. Three space won't collapse to a point. So homotopy equivalence is always a little bit of a, let me call it a slightly fishy notion. Some, several people will disagree with that, but it's it, it's very, very strong, uh, sorry, weak version 
of equivalence and connecting it to what we really want, the homeomorphism is a really major step. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.